Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 85 with me Craig Barton. Yes, the summer holidays are over but it's not all doom and gloom because we are back with a brand new series of Resource of the Weeks for this academic year, each week highlighting an amazing resource that has been uploaded and shared by members of the TES Maths community. Now, sounds a little bit arrogant this, but we're going to start this brand new series with one of my own resources, but I promise there's a very good reason for that. And that's because this activity has been the one that we've used with our brand new year seven students for their first experience of secondary school mathematics for the last few years. And I've adapted it and uploaded it to share it with Tez because I'm absolutely obsessed with this resource. It's called Biffy. Um, and it's part of my rich task series. There's 30 of these all freely available on TES. And each one of these rich tasks has something in common. And that's that they are low barrier, high ceiling activities. Low barrier in the sense that kids can have success at them within about the first 20 seconds. And high ceiling in the sense that you can just keep on challenging the students and asking them questions. And they can go on for weeks and weeks and weeks with this kind of task. So Diffie is one of my all time favorites. So let's take a look what it's all about. Uh, so it comes complete with a PowerPoint and an Excel file and also a worksheet. All you really actually need is the PowerPoint um, and then just a pen and paper and you're good to go. But I've provided some extra support materials just in case you want them. And Diffie works like this. It's all explained on this single slide. You pick any four numbers you like. Um, and I would suggest you start with numbers between about 1 and 15 until the students are happy with what's going on. And then what you do is you work out the a positive difference between the first and second number so you do the biggest number take the smallest number so between one and three is two so you write two below there uh, then for the second one you work out the positive difference between three and five which i think is two so you put two below there then it's between five and eleven which is six so you put it there and then just be careful with this last one it's the difference between the last number and the first number eleven and one which is ten and you write it there and that's called a diffy one once you do your first row and then you carry on, so you work out the diffy of the uh, of the first row and write it below it. So you work out the difference between two and two, which is zero, between two and six, which is four, six and ten, which is four, and ten and two, which is eight. And that's your diffy two. And you keep going until something interesting happens. And that something interesting is the zero, zero, zero that you reach. And this particular set of numbers has reached that on the fifth row. So that gives us a diffy five. So this set of numbers, one, three, five, eleven, is a diffy five. And that's it really. Then I give the students the slide, what questions would a mathematician ask? And get them to try and come up with some of their own questions that they'd like to investigate based upon this prompt. Now obviously that's quite demanding for, for students, especially year sevens who might be a little bit shy, although increasingly they're, they're not these days, um, to come up with their own questions to investigate. So what I've done here on the resource page is I've put loads of examples of some of my favorite questions. So this is a nice way to start. Find examples of, of diffies that reach zero, zero, zero in one step. So can you find a diffy one? Can you find a Diffy 2, a Diffy 3, a Diffy 4, and for example, that's a Diffy 5 there. And then what have they all got in common? What is it that makes a set of numbers reach 0, 0, 0 in the first row? What about 0, 0, 0, 0 in the second row? What makes them Diffy 2s and so on? Um, is it possible to try and get a never-ending Diffy? Is that possible to do? Um, to make life easy, you can keep your numbers under 10. To make life harder, you can put fractions, negatives, you can even chuck a, chuck a third into the mix if you want. Loads of different stuff you can do with Diffies. Oh, I'll also show you this. I've built a little Diffy spreadsheet here. So this is useful um, if you're checking things. So I get kids coming up to me saying, sir, I found a Diffy 7, I found a Diffy 10, and it's dead hard to work out. So uh, you can just change the numbers here to check whether in fact they have and everything updates there. So we can see that those sets of numbers are a Diffy 6. And if I change that to a 1, we get a Diffy 5. And if I change that to a 0, it's still a Diffy 5 and so on. So there's a little Diffy checker that you might find handy. Uh, if we go back to some of these questions, this is quite nice as well. Theories to investigate. If all the numbers are under 5, you never get more than a Diffy 3. Uh, changing the last number has no effect on the Diffy size and so on. Throw these at the students and get them to investigate it. So in terms of structure for the lesson, what we do with our year sevens is we spend the first few minutes just going through this first slide just to check they're happy with it. And then we set them off trying to find examples of Diffy 1s, Diffy 2s, Diffy 3s, Diffy 4s and Diffy 5s. And then we get them trying to see if they've got anything in common and if it's possible for them to quickly generate a Diffy 1, a Diffy 2 and so on. 
That normally takes the first lesson. We have 50 minute lessons. And then in the second lesson, depending on how it's gone, we may then give them some theories to investigate or get them to investigate some uh, specific number patterns. So diffies that form um, arithmetic sequences or geometric sequences or Fibonacci diffies or square number diffies and all that kind of stuff. Loads of stuff to be going on with there. And we also get the, use this as an opportunity to get the students to, to communicate their thinking as well, because that's so, so, so important in mathematics. So as I say, this is our first lesson we have with our year seven students each year. And for us, it really, really sets the tone for what we want to achieve um, in mathematics in our department. The fact that we want the students to be creative, we want them to work together. The fact that math is gonna be interesting and engaging and exciting, but also it's gonna be hard work. It's not gonna be an easy ride for them, but the more they put in, the more they're gonna get out of it. So I hope you find that useful. Um, that's part of a back to school collection that I've put together for Tez. At the time of recording, the blog post hasn't gone live on the Tez website, but if you go to my uh, Mr. Barton Maths blog, you'll find it there, Back to School Maths Collection. And that's got 10 of the best uh, resources that I've found on Tez Maths, all freely available, which will get your week, uh, first week back to school off to a flyer. So I hope you found that useful, and I'll be back throughout this year with a resource of the week every single week. So take care and speak to you soon.